welcome to DC today. Uh, my first time here with you, at least in 2024 in the new year. It's Wednesday, January the 3rd, and I'm here with you in Newport Beach office studio. So another down day in markets, um, all of two, I guess, so far in the new year. And I don't know that that necessarily makes any sort of trend. And, and frankly, with, you know, having a nine week run up of call it 15 plus percent in S&Ps, Getting a couple of days of con some consolidation is healthy. It's normal. Frankly, um, you know, it's welcome as far as I'm concerned. I'm putting money to work every day, and so having some normalcy in how markets trade versus just a one-way ticket is is appreciated technically, even though it's a down day. Um, tens were slightly um, lower today. We had two basis point move. We closed at 391. Um, so largely unchanged there. We flirted actually with four percent uh, intraday. So we got a little move uh, above four, just touched four, and then kind of came back down. There was some um, inline uh, numbers that came out. We had ISM that came out at 47.2, which um, was just a little bit above what we were expecting at 47. Uh, sorry, it came out 47.4. We were expecting 47.2, so about inline. So it's still contractionary. So it's saying some of that manufacturing data is uh, just a little bit below what would be expansionary inside of a, um, a growing economy, but largely in line. We had job openings uh, today that were also largely in line, but actually a little bit better. We're running at about uh, 8.8 .8 million at this point, which while it's the lowest that we've seen in a couple of years, but call it three years, um, it is um, still very healthy. The, the labor market is still holding its own just fine. We, um, we had a high of around 12 million, um, that was in 2022, beginning of 22. So you can kind of see that post COVID, you know, anomaly just go through the economy with employment. And that's now kind of come, come back here a little bit, which is healthy and it's what the Fed wants to see. Um, so those numbers came out, we got a little bit low, you know, after a 4% 10 year kind of came down a little bit back to 390s area. We had uh, Fed futures yesterday that we're at a 76% chance of a Fed cut in March of 25 basis points, moved a little lower to, um, to a 70%. But um, pre pretty interesting to note, you know, how far in advanced Fed futures are pricing in rates declining. By the end of 2024, it's almost 100 basis points is what it's showing, at least on my screen is what's most probable. So I don't know, it might be a little ahead of itself there, but, but all that to say, um, Markets, uh, again, have had a great run here. We're um, hitting into the new year with an earnings expectation of something like uh, $240, $244 a share of S&P 500 earnings. So if you just divide that by call it 4710, roughly, where we close today, you're at about 20 times earnings. So markets aren't cheap. Um, I wrote a comment in there today, though, that if you were to equal weight the index, so we sort of know these giant technology companies that, you know, this magnificent seven, the seven biggest um, uh, technology companies out there, um, which by the way, have a market cap now equal to the UK, the entire market cap of the stock market of the United Kingdom, Japan, and Canada all together, just those seven US companies. So it's pretty phenomenal. But, if, but they're trading at really high multi, multiples, you know, high valuations. And so if you were to take those out or at least equal weight them in the index, you get a market closer to something around 16x, 16 16.5, 16 a little more normal. And we've seen a rotation at least the past, call it, you know, two months um, uh, from growth to value. And while the year of 2023 was definitely a, a growth heavy year, that's what outperformed everything else, largely because it sold off so much in 2022, but you know, if you um, if you equal weight things, and you're, you're seeing just this rotation into some more of the value areas of the market because they're just they're more reasonably priced at this point, and uh, I suspect that that continues. Um, you know, I don't know linearly, you know, in a straight line, but generally speaking, I, I think it's uh, it's it's a, it's a pretty safe bet to uh, to go with some some more reasonably priced um, parts of the market. Um, there was. Even with last year's run up, there was still about a million or I'm sorry, a trillion four that went into money market funds. I mean, rates are five percent. Why not? Right. So there's a lot of cash on the sideline. And so, you know, I, I don't know that we'll get another 23 performance in 24. I'd be shocked, frankly. But there's a lot of dry powder. There's almost six trillion dollars sitting in money market cash at this point. 
And so, um, you know, potentially rates go lower in 2024, potentially you have some dry powder at least, um, or the availability of it to move into some risk assets um, throughout the year. So, to, you know, so down day on the markets, um, but, you know, just getting started here in 2024, I wouldn't read too much into it here after two whole days. But um, tomorrow we have ADP payroll numbers. We have initial jobless claims. I'll be back with you on DC today, tomorrow. And uh, with that, I hope you all had a wonderful, you know, holiday season and happy new year and all those fun things and reach out anytime with questions. Thanks for listening.